Support comes from BECU, a member-owned credit union putting people over profit, offering financial services and support to the community with access to local financial centers, over 30,000 ATMs, and online resources at BECU.org. Federally insured by NCUA. Hey, it's Patricia Murphy. It's Wednesday. This is Seattle Now. Seattle is home to some stellar bands, and those musicians haven't played a live show in a year. Many of them are raising money tomorrow night to make sure the venues they love are still around by the time it's safe to go to a concert again. In a minute, Rachel Flotard and Sir mix will tell you why you should watch. But first, let's get you caught up. Seattle elementary schoolers are headed back to the classroom. Both the district and the teachers' union still need to sign off, but they've reached a tentative agreement to return preschoolers and special education students by March 29th. First through fifth grades would head back on April 5th. Governor Inslee signed an emergency proclamation on Monday, ordering school districts to offer students at least two days of on-campus, in-person instruction a week. Another familiar name has entered the race to be Seattle's next mayor. Former City Council President Bruce Harrell joined the field yesterday with a promise to rebuild trust in city government. Harrell served three terms on the council before stepping down two years ago and has actually been mayor once before, but just briefly. He served as mayor for five days after former Mayor Ed Murray resigned. And we've unlocked a new vaccine phase. Starting today, if you're part of 1B Tier 2, you're eligible to sign yourself up. 1B Tier 2 includes high-risk critical workers like grocery workers, corrections officers, and bus drivers. It also includes anyone 16 or older at high risk of severe illness from COVID. It's been a long time since you could catch a show at the Nectar Lounge or spend a night dancing at Rebar. And many small venues that are the bedrock of Seattle's music scene are struggling to survive the pandemic. But Seattle's music community is pulling together a live-streamed event to help. Tomorrow night, Keep Music Live will raise money to give grants to local venues. Musician and artist manager Rachel Flotard is co-hosting it along with Sir Mix-A-Lot. They are both here today. Thanks so much, you two, for taking the time. What's up? Hello there. How's it going? Great. I'm so glad you two could join us for this because, you know, Seattle has major venues like Key Arena and Paramount. But for a lot of people, these small independent venues are really where they discover music, where you can really feel that musician in front of you. Mix, you're from Auburn. How important were these kind of live music experiences for you? Well, coming up, I lived in the CD. So I was in the central area for the longest and... um Once I discovered that they were there, I mean, I couldn't stay away from them. Even if I couldn't afford to go in, I'd sit outside and listen. Every time an artist comes up here that I know, if they're in a big venue, I don't go see them. But if they're in a small one, you know, showbox on down, I go. What is it about those small venues, though? Because like I said, for me, it's that you can be so close and intimate with musicians. For you, what is it? For, For artists, you know, you always know it's a cool spot to play when it's called a room. I love that room. Now... Nobody calls Key Arena the room, right? It's just something cozy, something something about the sound, the people, the atmosphere, the food. But those rooms are so cool. I mean, I, I play at least three or four of them here a year. I play Jazz Bones. I play the Nectar. I play the Tractor. I, I You know, I play the Wild Buffalo every year. That, that's like religion. And, you know, obviously we're not making the same pay we make in the larger venues, but who cares? Those are the ones we enjoy the most. We did a whole song, actually, called Till the Sun Comes Up, and that's what we're talking about. The Hole in the Wall Club, the Six in the Morning, Sun's Up, and Yes, Y'all Club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Rachel, you're from Jersey. What about you? Well, I mean, first, I just have to kind of harken back to the idea of calling it a room because it is like a house. It's like your home, and some of these places you play – so frequently or you visit so frequently as a fan that it does become a home and the people that work there are your family. Um, For me, coming from New Jersey, I didn't really get to see much live music that wasn't like going into the city, you know, with my parents or my friends. You know, I moved here in my late 20s 
really so much of my formative musical years and learning and still learning um, happened here in Seattle. You know, like the OK Hotel, no longer here. The Phoenix, no longer here. You know, the, uh, the Catwalk, I played there with men at work. Like, wow. wow. Dude, <laughs> I know. I'm still freaking out about it. And it was 250,000 years ago. There were clubs like the Crocodile in the late 90s, early aughts. That was like, you could walk in there like Norm from Cheers. Like, how's it going? <laughs> like, I've left gear. And you could like feel safe about leaving your shit. To me, large venues are easier to play if, if you're not in awe of the crowd. Because you can screw up and nobody really notices because you're so far away. <laughs> Oh, fascinating. When you're doing your own song, you say the wrong word. Somebody's like, he fucked up. You know? and, and, you see it and you, I, I just love it. I, I think that the, the younger artists are, they're clamoring for it. They, they, a packed house at a club beats a cold, dark void that makes noise in a big venue. It's not even close. It's true. Like there was a club in Bellingham called the 3B. Mix, did you ever play the 3B long, long ago? And it, it was like. Craig wouldn't let me. You know, I didn't know this at the time, but part of the, if they love you, they're like throwing full pints of beer on you while you're trying to play. And you're too busy, like, what the, what the hell is going on? But realizing, like, it's an embrace. Term of endearment. <laughs> it is a term of, but it's like, you know, in those small rooms. I mean, and, and then it wasn't so much like people recording on their phones every single move and word that you said. It was a, even more so intimate, like, because you were in it. It had a much different uh, vibe. But you can, you can smell the people. You can smell each other. That's how, <laughs> talk yeah. about intimate. And what do we lose, right, when, if these venues go away? Because they are teetering during this time. What gets lost? I'll say this. Seattle's culture. The, the, I mean, let's be real. When I leave town, and Rachel knows what I'm talking about, there's, there's, there's really only two things they ask you about. Number one is the clubs, the club scene. You ever met Pearl Jam? You ever met the presidents? You ever met Soundgarden? They ask you all those questions. They know all our rooms by name. They know the crocodile. They know all these clubs. And it's like, have you ever been there? No, I just read about it online or whatever. The thing about Seattle that people love the most, I think, is that. Everything else is just tech questions. But no, seriously, that's all you get. <laughs> Those is. are the two things you talk about. Bill Gates and this, the club scene. And the club scene can be a conversation for like two hours. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's like, you know what? Right now, every single issue on the planet needs CPR, right? Like everywhere you go, something needs help. This is just something that we can be vocal about, that we have some power over and can maybe control for the better. You know, these venues are um, not only obviously important to the venue owners as their livelihood, but they support all of the other people in the microcosm, you know, from the ticket booth to the security guard to every single important member of the community is affected. You know, just like everything else. Again, it's like we could shine a light on a million things that are wrong. This on Thursday night, what we're going to talk about is just music and how we can make a difference. And obviously, you know, Mix is so vocal and so supportive. And, you know, I'm just bringing up the rear. <laughs> That is so important because so many people's jobs rely on these venues and other businesses rely on them too. Let's use, take the Nectar, for instance. I play the Nectar quite often, right? Every artist that plays there does the same thing. Right after sound check, cross the street, kitty corner, they go get the slice of pizza. They sit there, they talk shit. Then they go, whatever they do in between the sound check and the show, they come back to do the show and they go back to the pizza pot spot again. Every single artist that's ever been there has done the exact same thing. And, and, and that's just a small example. I mean, Jazz Bones, there are restaurants lined up and down that street that benefit. Every time there's a show, um, they're ready. It is an ecosystem. And sometimes I think the image, people who aren't in the know, have a tendency to think there's some fat, greasy bastard back there that's just snatching money and snorting cocaine. And no, that's that. You guys are back in the 70s. That, I was going to say at 80. Hard working folks. <laughs> and they ain't making money. The average owner makes about 4% of their gross. This reminds me, Mix, you were in the middle of touring when COVID hit. Yeah. How did that go? What happened? 
that was uh you know I, we predicted it though I, I mean so we played you know KD Texas we played Dallas and they were like ah everything's gonna be all right just the sniffles you know what I mean <laughs> so then we get down to uh we get down to Lafayette and they were doing this big thing like they expected thirty thousand people and that's when I pointed out to a couple of people in charge that hey somebody gets sick whose dime is that who are they going after. You know, it might be me, but it might be you because you're the one that rented this out. So I think they did the right thing when they stopped and they turned us around and we drove back. And it was almost eerie driving across the bottom of the country because it was snowing in the middle of the country. So we went through Louisiana, obviously. Then we, you know, Texas. And When we got to Arizona, we were at the Cheesecake Factory eating. Literally, while we're walking out, they started putting boards in the window. I said, oh, what, wow. the hell, what the hell just happened, right? And I realized that they had just made an announcement that the restaurants had to close down. Wow. And, I, and then we couldn't get, it was hard to get hotels because uh, nobody knew what to do. So everybody was just closing. Needless to say, we got our black asses home as fast as possible. <laughs> Before I let you two go, first live show you want to see? Me? Anybody? Any place? I mean, it's <laughs> that bad. I mean, I, I'll go see... <laughs> I'll go see what's old boy used to play Knight Rider. I'll go see his whack ass. Dave, we'll go see David. We'll go get the Hoff. Yeah, Hasselhoff. I would go yeah. see the Hoff. Maybe Carrot Top opening. Something like some crazy bill like that. I would. Yeah, I have to agree. I'd go to the opening of an envelope at this point. Oh, Jesus Christ. One morning in June, some 20 years. We'll leave it right there. Thanks to my guests, Rachel Flotard, musician and artist manager, and the one and only Sir Mix-a-Lot. Thanks, you two. All Thank right. you. I'll be cool. See you Thursday. You can catch Keep Music Live's Benefit Concert tomorrow night, Thursday, the 18th, starting at 7.30. They'll have a bunch of local artists, archived footage from bands like Pearl Jam, and much more. Unfortunately, no David Hasselhoff, though. There's a link in the show notes with all of that information. Seattle Now is produced by Claire McGrain, Caroline Chamberlain Gomez, and Jason Pagano. Matt Jorgensen does our music. I'm Patricia Murphy. See you tomorrow. tomorrow.